Praise the Lord and welcome to Command Your Morning. I am Apostle Satvinda Romi from House of Prayers International in Kitengela. So blessed to have you join me this morning as we seek to see the direction the Spirit of God is giving us. What is the Spirit of God speaking to us this morning? Well, they say the early bird catches the worm and you are about to catch a revelation that is going to change your life. We are talking about the acceptable worship, the worship that God accepts. You know, we, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 and verses 6 that spirit gives birth to spirit, but that which is flesh will give birth to flesh. I repeat again, that is John chapter 3 and verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. What am I trying to say? In John chapter 4 and verses 24, the Bible says Jesus was telling the Samaritan woman that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. There is a way that God wants to be worshipped, not just any other way. The reason why I read John chapter 3 verse 6 is because what is born of the spirit is, of, is the spirit, what is born of the flesh is of the flesh. You know, when it comes to this world, this physical realm, you can deceive anyone. You can wrong someone, hurt someone, and then just pretend and take a gift and go and take it to them and tell them, look, I'm very sorry for what I did. This is a gift to tell you that I'm very sorry. And we as human beings born of the flesh, we can get deceived. But as for God, he's, he is spirit and he wants to be worshipped in truth, in, in authenticity and in spirit. And so he can, you cannot worship God. We cannot worship God in just any other way. There is a specific way God wants to be worshipped. There is a specific way he wants us to bring our offerings to him. There is a specific way he wants us to pray. As we look in the Bible, we find so many examples where God is telling the Israelites, this, this animal that you're bringing, some are lame, some are blind, go and take them to your governor. I am not going to accept these animals. There are times when they prayed and God would say that even though you make long prayers, I am not going to hear you. There are times they fast as Isaiah, in, uh, Isaiah chapter 58. There are times they would fast and God would tell them, is this the kind of fasting that I want? So we find that there is a way God wants us to worship him. Not any other way, not any man-made way, not any other traditional way, but our worship to God should be a worship out of revelation. And so we see that in the Bible, the Pharisees thought that they are worshiping God by fasting twice in a week. They are worshiping God by giving 10% of everything they get. They are worshiping God by wearing long robes, praying long prayers. But that was not acceptable to God. So it is very important for us as Christians to know the kind of worship that, uh, that God is acceptable before God, the kind of worship that attracts the presence of God, the kind of praise that makes God, the Bible says he's enthroned in our praises. What kind of praise will make God get enthroned or be enthroned in our praises? What kind of worship will touch the heart of God? What, how does he want me to worship him? God is very specific in how he wants us to relate to him, how he wants us to worship him. When he was giving the, uh, Moses, his servant, the blueprint of the tabernacle. Remember that he gave him every detail of that tabernacle. This is how the curtains should be too. This is how the color of the curtain should be. This is how you should carve this, you should carve that. This is where the tent, the ark of the covenant should be. This is how you'll separate. So he specifically to every detail gave Moses how that tabernacle should be, how he should be worshipped. There was brazen altar. There's a place where the priest has to wash his hand. There's a place where you need to dip the high soap in the blood. There are utensils that you have to sanctify. But here we are today. The blood of Jesus sanctifies us. The blood of Jesus has helped us and lessened the burden of all the Old Testament requirements, which I am sure many of us would be so tedious in carrying out. And the blood of Jesus, the new covenant, brings a free way to worship God through faith in Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. We are acceptable. The Bible says, come to the throne of grace and mercy and you will 
will obtain grace and mercy for the time of need. But I am very interested on how God should be worshipped. What is the kind of worship that attracts the presence of my Father? And so when the Bible says that he is God who is spirit and he should be worshipped in truth, and in spirit what is the bible says what what does the bible say sorry what is my spiritual worship what how can i give god spiritual worship it will amaze you to find in romans chapter 12 verse 1 the revelation of the kind of worship that is acceptable to god the bible says i appeal to you i appeal to you therefore brothers by the mercies of god to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship there we have it if God says I want you to worship me in truth I want you to worship me in spirit he is telling us exactly how to do it the way you worship me spiritually is when you present your body as a living sacrifice is this is how you become holy this is how you become acceptable I am not interested in the quantity of your sacrifice i am not interested in the quantity of the hours that you take in prayer or the amount of money you have used to bring into my sanctuary the way you worship me in truth and in spirit is when you give your body as an acceptable sacrifice to god is when we obey god is when we feel that the purpose of our life is to live a life that glorifies the lord that you you are more important than what you give to God. That your heart and the condition of your heart is more important than that sacrifice you present to the Lord. Yes, the Pharisees would fast twice in a week, which is very commendable, for, very good for a spiritual discipline. Yes, the Pharisees would faithfully tithe 10%, which the Lord Jesus said we should do. Yes, the Pharisees would wear decent long robes. Yes, they would go shalom, shalom everywhere. But the Lord is saying that this is your outward worship. This is like your fleshly worship. I want spiritual worship. And to me, spiritual worship is the condition of your heart. Spiritual worship is when you have given your body as a living sacrifice. Remember what the Lord Jesus said and I want us to understand today that what truly means what is most important to God is we who are giving that sacrifice up. I want to speak in James. The Bible says that Elijah was a man just like us but he prayed and there was no rain for three and a half years that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much so it is the man that makes that prayer avail much my dear brother and sister it is that prayer listen no matter how many sacrifices that Solomon gave the beautiful temple that he built in AD 70 that temple was destroyed because we need to know we cannot bribe God we cannot bring huge amounts of sacrifices to the house of God and think that he is going to close his eyes when we are doing things that are unacceptable. He told the Israelites, look, who has asked you for all these things that you have brought? Who has asked you for these cows, these sacrifices that you're bringing into my house? A cattle on a thousand hills belong to me. What is most important to me is the condition of your heart. What is most important to me is yours are you living a life like a living sacrifice are you a living sacrifice are you sacrifice are you nailing your flesh to the cross are you putting to death the mysteries of the flesh yes we are human beings yes we have weaknesses and the bible says in second corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 my grace is sufficient for you my power will work best in your weaknesses my dear brother and sister weaknesses were not put in us by our ourselves we were born and we found that we have weaknesses and that's how God says you make my strength complete when you invite my grace into the areas of your weakness share with him and tell him Lord I have a weakness in prayer Lord I have a weakness in reading your word Lord I have a weakness of anger Lord I have a weakness of immorality I have
have a weakness in pornography. Lord, I have a weakness. Tell him the area of your weakness and tell him, Lord, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. I need to invite your grace this moment. Let your grace come in and let your grace perfect itself in me. And that is how we will find that even before we utter a word in prayer, the Lord has answered. You know, someone asked me, there are people who prayed short prayers in the Bible, there are people who prayed long prayers in the Bible, but I don't see God being affected by the length of the prayer because it's like the length of the prayer is not the strength of the prayer. What is it, what is it, Pastor? What is it that makes God a, a prayer acceptable before God? And this is the answer. It is the one who is praying. The prayer, the prayer, hyphen er is more important than the prayer that they are making and so the lord is saying i am seeking for worshipers today and you would ask the lord the churches are full of worshipers this world is full of worshipers how would you say that you're seeking for worshipers the lord is saying i am seeking for those who will worship me in truth and in spirit those who will understand that the ones who i want remember when moses was coming close to god and god said remove your shoes the place you are stepping on is holy ground if you want to have intimacy with God if you want to approach the presence of God if you want to worship him and experience his presence and David says Lord it is better one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere uh, God it is better to be um, a watchman at your gates than to live in the tents of the wicked. What is that sweetness, that experience that David had with the Lord is because David had given himself completely to the Lord. And re remember one thing, that he even feared to touch the anointed of God because he knew that sin will break that fellowship I have my God. Now, when he sinned with Bathsheba, you can read Psalms chapter 51, he was devastated. He was broken and he said, Lord, I I know that your sacrifices are a broken heart. Listen, God cannot tell us that I, I want you to live a holy life. God cannot tell us that I want you to live a righteous life without being there to give us grace. Grace is the divine, divine energy of God and its influence upon our hearts. God cannot expect us to live holy and separated lives. He cannot expect us to worship him spiritually the way he wants us to worship him if he is not going to give us the grace if he is not going to give us the strength but remember in psalms 51 david says a broken and a contrite spirit is the sacrifice you want god wants us and this is what he's waiting to qualify us and to make us acceptable you see when electronic gadgets before they are put on the shelves they go through a lot of quality control tests in some of the devices, you'll even find that they've written behind QC past. For us to be QC past in the kingdom of God, we have to understand that we need to bring our brokenness to God. We need to show him our areas of weakness and let him know that without his divine intervention, we will not be able to live the kind of life that he is telling us to live. And in that act of brokenness, David understood that God would create in him a new heart. God would renew in him a steadfast spirit. Hallelujah. And so we find that the Bible is saying when God says, I am looking for people to worship me in truth and in spirit, literally is people who will give their lives as sacrifices to God. Giving your life as sacrifice means that there are things, there are people you cannot work with because you know that they are not on one page with you and God. There are decisions you cannot make your decisions are based on what is God saying. That is a sacrifice. You are paying a sacrifice. Hallelujah. The young people, you know, people say, let me have fun. And after I have fun, I'll get saved when I'm old. But when you give God your youth, you do, you, you're making a sacrifice. And you tell God, this is my spiritual act of worship. The sacrifice I'm giving by giving my youth to you to serve you, God. I am giving away my youth to serve you, God. I am living for you, not the agendas of the world, not the... Not the not, uh, not, you know, like the world would say that success is wealth, success is fame, success 
the world interprets success in many other ways. But remember, we need to be QC passed by our maker. We don't want to be QC passed by the world. We want to be QC passed by our maker. And so we live a life of sacrificing. The Bible says, and I love how it says that I appeal, I am begging you, brothers, by the mercies of God, present your body your mind, your soul, your spirit, present it to God. Hallelujah. Present it to God. Give it to God. Holy and acceptable. This is your spiritual worship. In other words, if you did not know what John 4, 24 means, that I'm looking for people to worship me in truth and in spirit, this is what it means. When we give ourselves as a living sacrifice, then we are worshiping God spiritually. You know, worship doesn't necessarily mean lifting up my hand and singing hymns. When I make a decision that, faith, that submits to the will of God and opposes my will, that is my spiritual act of worship. And that is the kind of worship that God is looking for. When I crucify my will, when I crucify my emotions when I crucify my ego and I put it at the feet of Christ to honor him to exalt him to magnify him to make him the master of my life that is my spiritual act of worship the act of worship that is acceptable before the Lord it is a limited time, but I know that that revelation has reached to you, that we want to give God our spiritual act of worship. And you could be worshiping God 24 hours without uttering a word, just by submitting your will to the will of God, submitting your emotions, letting him be the master, letting him have the final say, sacrificing our egos, sacrificing our past, sacrificing our emotions, sacrificing our pride this is your spiritual act of worship which is acceptable before the lord i would not want us to say shalom before i ask you to give your life to jesus christ it is the best decision i ever made i was a wild party girl i loved partying loved going out i know what i'm talking about i'm not just preaching because i'm taking something from scripture i am preaching my life the day I made a decision to give Jesus Christ my life was the best day of my life. So please, he has made me who I am and I am so, so happy. I'm proud of Satvinda. I am so happy with Satvinda and it is Jesus who has made Satvinda who she is today. She is now a role model, someone whom many people put off. Today, many people tell me, I would like to have the faith that you have, Satvinda. This is the work of Jesus. When I gave him my life, he molded me and made me into someone that I admire. So please give your life to Jesus by saying, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I confess my sins. I ask you to forgive me. And I ask you to write my name in the book of life. I invite you to come in and take over. From today, I confess I am born again in Jesus' name. If you have prayed this prayer and given your life to Jesus, I would love to know. My number is at the bottom of the screen. Text me, call me, and I'd love to lead you from here. Where do we go from here? Well, you've started a wonderful journey. Congratulations. You've just received eternal life. You are QC past in the books of heaven. Until next time, I just want to remind you the verse of today that in Romans 12, 1, that I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, and by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Have a wonderful, blessed day as you worship God throughout. Amen.